So over the last year, we have heard plenty of opinions in terms of what people think about Epic Game Store exclusivity deals. We have heard from enthusiasts, we have heard from developers, and opinions are quite varied and pretty split on numerous fronts. On one hand, Epic does help fund indie developers in particular who could use the money, which is great. On the other hand, Epic Game Store is inferior compared to, say, Steam, and Epic buying out exclusives means that people have to use this inferior launcher to run their games, which is not ideal for a lot of people who do enjoy the suite of features that comes with Steam. Another developer who chimed in recently goes by the name Tommy Reffens, and he is a co-creator for the Super Meat Boy franchise, which I think many of you will be familiar with. And this headline from website Destructoid reads, Tommy Reffens calls Epic Games Store exclusivity deal a total no-brainer. So he elaborated further. This is an interview conducted during PAX West by Destructoid with Tommy Reffens. And here is exactly what he had to say on that front. They told me they want Super Meat Boy Forever, which is an upcoming new entry from the franchise, on the Epic Games Store, but it would be a year exclusive. At first, I was kind of like, oh, okay. Then they said they would guarantee our sales. Even then, I'm kind of like, I don't even know what to ask for. So run the numbers and tell me what you would offer. They did, and I was like, yes, it was a total no-brainer. After I got the numbers, the level of fear of not launching on Steam for PC was immediately alleviated. Destructoid then talked about how the Epic Games Store exclusivity deals mitigates the risk of a indie developer going under if their game doesn't sell well because... Epic's funding essentially provides means for indie developers to survive beyond this present game release, even if it doesn't perform as well as they would have liked to. And on that, Refn said this, that's huge. That's huge for anyone in any industry to be like, when you get done with your work, you're definitely going to make this much. I don't know who wouldn't take that deal. Reference also talked about the extra layer of support that his game has gotten, especially in terms of marketing. As Destructoid pointed out here, quote, the promotion that Super Meat Boy Forever has received is something that generally doesn't happen without a major publisher's backing. Reference added, we announced at the Game Awards, and these are things that I'm not going to get anywhere else. To actually have Meat Boy on the screen at the Game Awards is nuts. From there, he proceeded to talk about the pushback and backlash from consumers in regards to Epic Game Store exclusivity, especially for titles that have been announced for Steam and then have the rug pulled at the last minute. About that, he had this to say. Gaming is a super important thing to a lot of people. It's a part of their lives. When something comes up and challenges that, it's completely reasonable for the reaction to kind of assume the worst is going to happen. I can see the passion of having something that's near and dear to you change and being averse to that change. I was completely expecting that, and I was completely expecting people to bring up Tencent stuff. What's unfortunate is that the concerns of some people are reasonable. You have people who are like, it's not that great of a store or whatever, but then you have the wild bullshit of Chinese spyware conspiracy theory crap. It's like, okay, you people shut up because the people who have actual concerns are being drowned out, and I think it's a shame they all get lumped together. And then he concluded with, I feel like people are going to buy games on PC because that's what we have done. Steam is a way to buy games, but it's not the only place that sells them, and it's not the only place that's successful. So first things first, I will say that Reference does empathize with people who do have issues with the Epic Game Store, which is good to see. They didn't pull an ooblets and dismiss all the concerns that are out there in regards to the Epic Game Store and talk about how there are greater issues out there like climate change and human rights abuse. Reffens didn't take that route. He actually said, hey, there are people out there giving out tangible feedback and criticisms. So it's good to see that he's kind of being sympathetic towards people who do have issues and isn't just saying that stuff doesn't matter. And he is also an indie developer, so I think it is understandable that he would accept a deal that assures some semblance of financial security for his game should it not sell as well as maybe he'd like to. 
though obviously that remains to be seen. Now, worth noting about Super Meat Boy Forever is that, as you can see from this trailer back in 2017, it was originally supposed to release on Steam before he took the Epic exclusivity deal. So that's something that a lot of people aren't too happy about. This switcheroo, it's one thing if, you know, an indie developer is upfront about their intent to sell their game on Epic and explain why they have to do that, talk about their financial situation, and kind of make it a two-way street in which they really communicate with their community and tell them what's going on. Not sure what the overall sentiment is with Super Meat Boy. What I do know is that unlike the original platformer, this game right here is more of an automatic running type of experience, a mobile runner type of game. And it's going to come out on all the major consoles alongside mobile platforms. So yeah, it's just an automatic runner type game, which isn't what a lot of people, I don't think, one out of Super Meat Boy. But who knows, it could be fun. But yeah, as you can see, it's coming out on Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and it was coming out on Steam. But now in newer trailers, you'll see that it's listed as an Epic Store exclusive. So that is something to consider. For people who might have been waiting on Steam, they're out of luck now. They're going to have to wait a year and what have you. And Reference here isn't saying that people who might be upset about that aspect, he's not saying that stuff isn't unjustified. He's just saying that the deal he was offered as an indie developer especially was a no-brainer for his situation because it offered financial security. And, you know, he isn't supported by this major publisher or anything. So... I, I get where he's coming from, I will say that. Now, he says right here that I don't know who wouldn't take that deal, but there's actually plenty of developers who have decided to refuse Epic exclusivity for a wide variety of reasons. So, obviously, the Dark developer story is uh, sort of the big one. This is a developer that saw their game was wishlisted on Steam quite a bit. It was, quote top 50 most wishlisted games on Steam, and he had not long prior to being contacted about the potential of Epic exclusivity, he had released a trailer saying that this game is coming out on Steam, and he felt as though it would be a betrayal to suddenly pull the rug from under people, from under Steam users who have been looking forward to this game and say, you're going to have to wait a year, which is why he decided to reject the deal. He said, when thinking long-term, however, this is the dark developer, this was an easy and obvious decision to make in my case. So for the Super Meat Boy developer, this epic deal, taking the money was a no-brainer. For the dark developer, not taking the money and thinking long-term in terms of consumer goodwill, that was a no-brainer. So different takes on the same issue. More recently, Bandai Namco, a major publisher, they basically talked about how going Epic exclusive isn't within their vision and future plans. Here's exactly what Bandai Namco had to say on that matter. The main focus for us is the consumer and the brand, and for each brand, we decide what's the best way to satisfy the consumer and to engage the widest audience possible. So for instance, I don't see any point of putting Tekken 7 pictured above on Epic Store. Epic is just another store. It's fantastic. They have a lot of strength and lots of users. The business model is attractive to us because because it's more profitable, but still, their interest is, if I'm correct, exclusivity, and this is not our vision. We want our content to be available for as many fans as possible. I don't think we'll deal with Epic in the short term while we have this strategy, but of course, if they're open, we'll go there, and by open, I'm assuming they're talking about if they are willing to non-exclusively host Bandai Namco games, they'll go right ahead and release their games on both Epic and Steam. Another developer who's adamant about not taking Epic's deal is ReLogic, which is the developer for Factorio. This is a tweet from one of the developers there. She said, since there seems to be confusion, no ReLogic title will ever be an Epic exclusive there is no amount of money we could be offered to sell our souls. Now, this tweet did get a bit of backlash from developers because 
it seems to suggest that anyone who takes the Epic exclusivity deal is selling their soul. So a few developers, indie developers who took the deal because they had to said, hey, that seems a little harsh. And the response to that was, for us, it would be, and I was speaking for us, I can understand indies taking advantage of free money. So basically, she's saying that in our situation, us as Relogic, who are in a good position, if we were to go Epic exclusive, we specifically would be selling our souls by going Epic exclusive, especially given what a huge community they've kind of garnered on Steam, and given they're in a good financial position. So they are in a situation where they don't have to go Epic exclusive, so they're deciding not to do so, despite the extra money they might earn by doing so. So that I think is commendable. And this is their situation specifically. The Super Meat Boy developer says, I don't know who wouldn't take that deal. Turns out plenty of developers would not take that deal. And CD Projekt Red, they aren't going exclusive. You know, they've said in the past, we're definitely not gonna do that. So there are plenty of developers out there who understand consumers' frustrations towards the way Epic is handling this whole situation, the way they're going about securing exclusives when their store is far from being in an ideal state. For developers who are in a place where they can do this and who feel like long-term goodwill from consumers and offering players choice is the main thing to focus on, they're saying no to Epic exclusivity. But again, it depends on a developer situation. Even the Ooblets developers, I understand that maybe they were in a situation where they might have had to take this deal in order to feel a sense of financial security. The mistake they made was the way they condescended people who have genuine concerns about Epic and kind of downplayed all of their concerns. That's what they really screwed up on. At the very least, the Super Meat Boy developer isn't doing that. As he says here, you know, he's talking about how concerns some people have are reasonable, etc., etc. So yeah, make of that what you will. Another perspective on Epic Game Store exclusivity. I'd love to hear what your take is on Tommy Reffin's stance on all of this in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.